Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is a morning market prep video for July 1st, 2021. Well, my goodness, as we enter the second half of the year, we had a pretty good day yesterday with the Dow technicals improving. And even though the SPY and um, it set new record highs, the QQQ is pulling back just a little tiny bit. Our technicals across the board are looking pretty good at this point. So how about we settle into our office chairs, let's grab ourselves something to drink, let's buckle up, get ready for the Thursday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. So good morning, everyone. I hope you all had a restful evening and you're ready to get started here with a big day, potentially a big day of economic data that certainly could move the market around. Let's take a look at what the technicals of these charts have to show us and let's see if we can gain some information. Now, yesterday we saw a pretty good move with the Dow showing a great response yesterday, holding that 50-day moving average. Those bulls came in to defend. It was interesting, though, that we're, there were still an awful lot of companies not doing that great in the Dow. And although we had several moving up, they were still actually in downtrends. That being said, however, the index is looking pretty good. And if we take a look, we broke the broke held above that 50 day moving average. And we're trying to break right now. This is the pre market candle. We're trying to push up here this morning and we're trying to break that downtrend in the chart. Let's also keep in mind that we've got some price resistance up here in this chart to deal with. So we've kind of got that little double whammy of resistance right there in the chart, price resistance, to see whether or not we can push through. Now, futures were a little bit higher overnight than they are at the moment. We've pulled back just a little bit, as you can see here in the pre-market. And we're just waiting on data to decide whether we're going to be bullish or bearish after that point in time. So watch that carefully right here. That downtrend still exists, but we have the bullish signal that we held above our 50 day moving average. As a matter of fact, this pattern right here is a typical bullish pattern that I like to trade over and over and over. Just unfortunate that we have this big level of price resistance in the chart that we still have to be a little bit concerned about in the Dow. So watch that close. Let's take a look at the SPY. Now SPY ended up closing at its 34th record high close so far this year. Um, remarkable moves um, in the SPY. Now this has been largely led by the big tech giants. We've had an awful lot of stocks in the SPY just kind of drifting sideways. But the picture has improved just slightly with more and more stocks kind of getting in gear, but they we seem to be lacking in momentum in a lot of places in the market, so watch that close. Now, futures overnight popped up. We were trying to push through in that move, and right now we've got a little bit of a pop and drop starting to show up here on the daily chart with the SPY flattening out just a little bit here heading into the morning. But remember, we've got some big data that could move that around and we certainly don't have a major worry here other than the fact that we may be just a little bit extended in the short term that we may need a little bit of rest. However, we have a good support level here in the chart and if the price does pull back, we could see that holding in that area pretty easily. So watch for that possibility. But right now, I don't see any reason to suggest, um, you know, tremendous bearishness in the SPY. There are some concerns and I'll share those in just a little bit, but I think we're looking pretty good. If we look at the Qs, um, unbounded, unbounded bullishness here in um, the QQQ. We have just been driving into tech stocks like there is no tomorrow and pushing up. And although we did get a little bit of a rest up here, it certainly isn't anything to be concerned about in the NASDAQ. And it just appears that no price is too high uh, for folks being willing to buy up tech. 
Um, now, I can't rule out the possibility here in the NASDAQ of a resting pullback, whether we could we could consolidate up here or we could actually pull back in this chart. We have plenty of price support in here if we were to do that. But let's keep in mind we've extended so far a pullback in the NASDAQ could be rather painful. And with the NASDAQ being, as a matter of fact, with the big tax being the predominance of the, of the, uh, the levity in the market, if they were to start to pull back, it could be rather painful for the other indexes. So watch that carefully if that were to begin. But so far, there's no hints or clues here that that's ready to start. But just keep, keep on your toes. Don't become complacent here in the market. And then IWM. IWM continuing to struggle here just a little bit. We we have this little teeny tiny downtrend that's going on. We have price resistance in this chart that we continue to struggle with. We've attempted a couple times to push through, can't quite push through there. And we had, although a bullish move yesterday, didn't hold on real well into the close. We just pulled back a little bit. But overall, I got to say, bulls still are in control of IWM, although we have this little bit of a technical problem that we have to overcome. We're holding price support levels in the chart. We're not breaking down. I don't see anything here that just suggests run for the doors. The bears are about ready to attack. But we also don't want to become complacent thinking that they will never come back because we know that they will. It's just a question of when. So kind of stay on your toes, stay focused for that possibility. If we were to stumble in this big bull run that we've seen here, the tumble to the downside could be pretty painful. So just be um, watchful for that possibility. Let's take a look at our uh, VIX this morning. Um, VIX, this is one of those things that gives me just a, a little bit of a concern. If you remember the old Arsenio Hall show, uh, things that make you say, hmm, well, that's kind of what I see here in the VIX. We have been pushing for new record highs, new record highs, new record highs, 34th new record high in the SPY yesterday uh, for this year alone. And yet our VIX can't make a new low. We, we continue to struggle in here. So what it shows me is that we just, although we're moving up, although we're moving up in the indexes, we don't have a lot of participation with a lot of stocks. We don't have a, a lot of uh, momentum in this move. So we we'll want to watch that closely. I don't know that this is this means anything bearish, just that we want to watch that closely just in case we do decide to flip to the other side and those bears do come in for just a little bit. But watch that closely. We, we really should be thinking as we push these new record highs, we should be thinking of new lows in the VIX, but it's not happening. So just that little bit of caution and warning uh, to pay attention there in the VIX. If we take a look at our T2122, our T2122 is also showing us that problem. It's showing us, that remember, this is the four week new high, new low ratio. And we would think as we continue to set new record highs and push to the upside and all of this stuff, we should be seeing this up here, but it's not. It's not because the majority of stocks are not up. The majority of stocks are sliding sideways and even slightly down. And so we have this little, uh, well, this divergence um, with the indexes pushing up based on big tech and our overall breadth of the market being relatively low. So kind of a concern here, um, with with that happening and I'll show you a, a major divergence here in just a little bit but keep an eye on this T2122 now and remember T2122 doesn't tell us which direction the market's going to go um, as a matter of fact um, well, all it does is signal when we're kind of overbought or oversold in the market and we're kind of in the middle of the road here so if we can find some bullish inspiration today 
in um, some of the economic data coming out, we could certainly surge up here. We've got plenty of upside room to do that in T21-22. If um, um, we find some inspiration for the bears, we still have plenty of downside room that we could move before we hit that oversold condition in uh, in this chart. So just watch that close. It's not giving us um, directional signals, but it is telling us that there, there's something to be concerned about here when we continue to move up, but the majority of the stocks are not following that move. Um, and this chart over here is going to help illustrate that. Let's take a look at absolute market breadth. T2101 is the absolute market breadth index. Notice that T2101 continues to show this lack of motivation. We have more stocks going sideways to down than we do up. As a matter of fact, if I pull this back and if I lay in um, on here, if I do a comparison with the SPY in here, Look at the massive divergence that we have between market breadth and where the actual market is trading. It is a remarkable divergence. Now, I don't know that that necessarily means that we are suddenly going to top and the market corrects. I don't know. But what I am saying is we need to be on our toes. We need to be straight up focused and don't become complacent in here thinking that the market will never ever turn lower because it certainly can and we want to watch that carefully. This divergence is really beginning to be kind of a concern for me that we just are lacking in momentum. We have very select stocks moving the markets up and the majority of stocks just languishing, going nowhere. How long that can last, I can't tell you, but I would be a little bit careful and cautious about that. That divergence is pretty darn substantial. So just watch that closely. That's about one of my major concerns here overall that we may have gotten a little bit carried away on this buying frenzy and when it does snap it could snap pretty quickly and painfully so just be prepared now having said that what we want to do is we want to stay with the trend the trend is certainly bullish we want to stay with the trend as long as it lasts um you know this is very reminiscent to me of of 1999 in the run-up where we just were relentlessly bullish and then boy when when it when the dam broke, it really broke um, all at once. I'm not saying that's going to occur, just saying it's kind of reminiscent of that, and we're going to want to watch that. So stay with the trend, but be careful not to overtrade and be careful not to become complacent. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. Now, our economic calendar, we've got quite a few things here that we want to pay attention to this morning. We want to uh, keep a close eye on jobless claims. That'll be coming out here at 8.30. We've got PMI coming out and unlikely to move the market a lot. Now, ISM could be very important for us today, so keep that in mind at 10 a.m. Construction spending and natural gas. Other than that, um, we've got the Fed balance sheet and some Fed speak in here, but I don't think I would worry much about that because no one seems to care about how much debt the Fed is building up. Um, that doesn't seem to matter. But watch these reports here this morning. That could determine whether we're going to be bullish or bearish today. Watch that carefully. And then also remember, as you're planning forward, we could... We have a, um, a three-day holiday coming up with, um, or three-day weekend coming up with the 4th of July. It, it's not out of the question, guys, that after we, after we bump through these, um, these numbers here this morning, the volume could drop and price action could become very, very light and choppy. And the reason is you can just imagine that a lot of the trading floors are clearing out. A lot of traders are heading out to enjoy the holiday. So don't be too surprised after we get these numbers if the market just kind of dies on the vine. Um, watch for that possibility. And then remember, we've got this big number tomorrow morning and we could get a lot of price action around these data points tomorrow morning. And then once again, the market, I would expect on Friday after we get through these data points and we get through the initial reaction on those data points, 
that the market just becomes absolutely stale and stagnant um, as everyone uh, takes off. Um, it's the getaway day, um, and they may be adding to their three-day weekend for a four-day weekend by leaving early on Friday. So just kind of keep that in mind and plan your trading carefully around that. Let's take a look at the earnings calendar. Now, the earnings calendar, we have 11 companies on uh, that earnings calendar, but we have a considerable number of them that are unconfirmed reports. So I've only got three here from the list that are somewhat notable. Um, um, we've got WBA um, reporting. Looks like they reported well this morning, pushing up higher here in the, in the pre-market. We also want to keep in mind, though, that although it is pushing up, we're shoving right into some price resistance and the downtrend in that chart. But keep a close eye on it. That could uh, be bullish for that chart. We could reverse and come back around and get back above that 50-day moving average. Let's take a look at AYI. AYI reporting today. A little pop and drop so far on the morning. We've been dealing with some price resistance. Got a price range trade going on in here. A little bit of rising lows, however. So we've got that wedge pattern in here. If we can find that inspiration, we might be able to push on through. But kind of keep in mind that we're a bit on that knife's edge here. If we can't push up, we could drift down and break that trend. So watch that close. And then MKC. We've got McCormick reporting today. It looks like it's doing a little bit of a bullish push here this morning trying to break this overall downtrend to the upside maybe hold some support levels in here and turn around and become bullish notice right here i'm um, trying to break back above that 50-day moving average so watch that closely let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up but before we do that guys if you could do me a quick favor if this is the first time you've seen these videos please do me a favor click that subscribe button on youtube and click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time i post one of these videos and more importantly than anything else is you're clicking that thumbs up button and you're leaving brief co comments on the video. Um, that engagement helps um, the algorithm show these videos to more folks and helps the channel grow. And I just want to say thank you to everyone. We continue to see that growth. You guys are awesome. I truly, truly appreciate it. And I want to just a huge shout out. I want to, I, 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 I wish I could shake your hands. Everyone who is um, supporting the channel, clicking that link under the title for Buy Me a Coffee. You guys yeah, are awesome. Thank you so, so much for your kind support um, for the channel. Um, I truly, truly appreciate it. Let's take a look at um, some stock setting up. And please keep in mind that there is no recommendation to buy or sell any securities here. Um, when I look at charts, um, I have a bias just like any other trader. So make sure that you take a look at these charts carefully. Make sure they fit your risk tolerance. Make sure they fit your rules of the trade and um, follow your own guidance. Never, ever blindly follow anyone else's trade ideas. Let's take a look at a couple of these trades that, uh, that I'm watching. Um, I added an alert here on RIG yesterday. Let me show you my drawing here. Rig looking pretty good. Notice we've got this little upside trend going on here, uh, moving up, and we're challenging this resistance high. Now, one of the reasons I'm kind of stuck here on um, oil sector is because I believe that we're going to continue to see oil prices go higher. Um, and um, just on the basis of inflation and reopening the economies around the world, we're going to see those oil prices continue to surge up. Rig, being an exploration company and a modestly priced company, is looking pretty good in here. So keep a close eye on that. If we can pop through this level, I want you to see that possibility that this thing could almost double just to its next resistance level in the chart. So keep a close eye on that. Rig's looking pretty good um, overall um, if we can pop through that resistance, that is. So watch that closely. Um, I continue to talk about plug power. I think plug continues to set up here. This is one of those charts that um, you just never know when it's going to go, and, and it can be pretty darn volatile when it moves. Um, let's take this trend. If we were to draw this out this way, kind of notice that we're 
as we consolidate and rest out here, we're coming over close to that trend and that possibility that we could maybe pop through that area here. Um, fuel cell technology, um, maybe gaining a little bit of support here recently with BMW coming out with a fuel cell car. So watch this carefully uh, for that opportunity for that to move up. Another, another stock in that group, um, Ballard Power. Might be worth keeping an eye on. Not quite as good a technical picture here in Ballard Power as we saw in Plug, but it is definitely noteworthy. We're moving in this technical pattern. We need to break through that resistance right there, but watch that carefully. If we can pop through, maybe some opportunities there in Ballard Power. Keep an eye on some of the solar sector stocks, TAN. Um, did really well for my alert here in the chart, pushing up, now pulling back. Now, I think this pullback could be nothing more than that rest. So if we rest or pull back along this um, resistance level up here, watch for that next opportunity that we could pop through. I would keep 10 on your list um, for a potential. And I'm going to say that, um, whoops. First Solar would be another one that you would want to put on your list. Notice we had a massive surge, but in First Solar, we broke through this resistance level in the chart, and now we're coming back to test that as support. So give this a little bit of time. Now, one of the things we do have to be careful with is the chase. It's really easy to see a bullish candle pop up right in here and just jump right on it and it may be a little bit early. Keep in mind that we may have to back and fill a little bit. We may need a little bit more rest in here, sliding over toward trend, but keep a close eye on for solar. It could be setting up looking pretty decently overall. Let's take a look at this chart XL. XL I've had on the list for a while and it failed me here. Um, we were looking like we were gonna set up for a bullish pattern. We broke support, but notice that we've recovered that support. And this is important to me. When a stock breaks price support, it must recover and then it has to prove it can hold that support. And that's what we're trying to do now. We're just kind of resting in here, trying to hold that support. If we could see those buyers step up in here, there may be that opportunity to push on through to the upside. So keep a close eye on that. It's looking pretty good overall. Now you guys know I've been mentioning NIO. NIO just continues to run like crazy. Um, really, really strong. Watch this pretty carefully. I wouldn't want to chase it here, but wait for that next rest, consolidation, or pullback. So we here's our trend. So if this could rest or consolidate back into here, um, wait for that next opportunity. These are looking really, really strong. NIO showing lots and lots of strength. You know, a chart that um, kind of cost me a little bit of money failed on me that um, um, is Fubo, but I have to say FUBO here is looking pretty good overall. Notice we're pushing against some resistance in the chart right here. We're still holding on to this trend, that possibility that this could push on through to the upside. So watch that carefully. If we can break that resistance, there may be some more upside here in Fubo. Watch that close. Um, Let's take a look at um, Oracle. Now, Oracle is completely the other direction. I'm actually trading Oracle short, and that, that trade right now is just a little bit down. But notice we have this pattern where we're breaking down to the downside and we're holding underneath here. Now, this is a hold underneath the 50-day moving average. Notice our shorter-term moving averages have crossed down, and they're supporting this potential short. Um, with resistance above. Can't say that this trade's going to work out, but I'm starting to watch some of those short trades just in case that market does decide to tip to the other um, side. I can't say that that's going to happen, but I am watching that fairly closely for that potential. So there's a few charts for you to watch and um, be thinking about today. I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I wish you great results in your trading. And we'll see you right back here, bright and early Friday morning. Have a good one, everyone.